What is the Digital Operational Resilience Act, DORA? The EU's Digital Operational Resilience Act, DORA, takes effect in January 2025. Organisations in every sector have much to learn from DORA's requirements, though the regulation itself targets information and communication technology suppliers to the financial industry. In this short video, we will give you an overview of DORA and its five core pillars. What is DORA? The EU created the Digital Operational Resilience Act, DORA, in response to the European Commission's Digital Finance Strategy, September 2020. As the name of the regulation makes clear, DORA aims to strengthen the financial sector by imposing a consistent regulatory framework for assessing and ensuring digital operational resilience. More than 22,000 financial institutions and information and communication technology ICT service providers based in the EU will be subject to DORA, including banks, investment companies, insurance companies and intermediaries, data reporting providers and cloud service providers. Penalties include fines up to 2% of a firm's total annual worldwide turnover or in the case of an individual, a maximum fine of 1 million euros. Financial entities that fail to report major ICT-related incidents or significant cyber threats as required under DORA may also face fines. Third-party ICT service providers that are designated as critical by the European Supervisory Authorities, ESAs, may face fines of up to 5 million euros, or in the case of an individual person, a maximum fine of €500,000 for non-compliance with the regulation's requirements. What is the objective of DORA? It is a known fact that the financial sector has increasingly become heavily dependent on ICT and information in a digital form. The COVID-19 crisis also acted as a catalyst, as financial institutions now rely even more on the availability of digital systems to conduct day-to-day -day operations in a remote fashion. However, this dependency has increased technological and cyber risk exponentially, and the last couple of years has shown how much digital resiliency cannot be underestimated. The EU's aim with DORA is that of strengthening the financial sector's resilience to ICT-related incidents and introduces very specific and prescriptive requirements that are homogenous across EU member states. Critical ICT third parties, which provide ICT-related services to financial institutions, such as cloud platforms, data analytics and audit services, are also subject to this new regulation. Organisations need to be able to withstand, respond and recover from the impact of ICT incidents, thereby continuing to deliver critical and important functions and minimising disruption for customers and for the financial system. This is only achievable by establishing robust measures and controls on systems, tools and third parties, by having the right operational continuity plans in place, while testing their effectiveness on a continuous basis. This Act provides a very specific set of criteria, templates and instructions that will shape how financial organisations manage ICT and cyber risks. It demonstrates that EU regulators want to be very hands-on on the topic, with a considerable emphasis on reporting, communication and assessments that need to take place on a frequent basis, enabled by standardised formats. As such, a single, consistent supervisory approach will be adopted across the relevant sectors. The essence of DORA is divided across five core pillars that address various aspects or domains within ICT and cybersecurity, providing a comprehensive digital resiliency framework for the relevant entities. A summary of the key requirements or aspects are as follows. 1. ICT Risk Management the proposal establishes a set of requirements on the ICT risk management framework, including set up and maintain resilient ICT systems and tools that minimize the impact of ICT risk. All sources of ICT risks should be continuously identified in order to set up protection and prevention measures. A prompt detection of anomalous activities should be established. 
dedicated and comprehensive business continuity policies and disaster and recovery plans should be in place, ensuring a prompt recovery after an ICT-related incident. Establish mechanisms to learn and evolve both from external events as well as the entity's own ICT incidents. 2. ICT-related incident reporting Establish and implement a management process to monitor and log ICT-related incidents. Classify the incident according to the criteria detailed in the regulation and further developed by the ESAs including EBA, EIOPA and ESMA. Ensuring the reporting of incidents to the relevant authorities using a common template and a harmonized procedure as established by the respective supervisory authority. Submit initial, intermediate and final reports on ICT-related incidents to the firm's users and clients. 3. Digital Operational Resilience Testing Elements within the ICT Risk Management Framework should be periodically tested for preparedness. Any weaknesses, deficiencies or gaps must be identified and promptly eliminated or mitigated with the implementation of counteractive measures. Digital operational resilience testing requirements must be proportionate to the entity's size, business and risk profiles. Conduct Threat-Led Penetration Testing TLTP, also known as a Red-Purple Team Assessment, to address higher levels of risk exposure. 4. ICT Third-Party Risk Ensure sound monitoring of risks emanating from the reliance on ICT third-party providers. Harmonizing key elements of the service and relationship with ICT third-party providers to enable a complete monitoring. Ensure that the contracts with the ICT third-party providers contain all the necessary monitoring and accessibility details, such as a full service level description, indication of locations where data is being processed, etc. Promote convergence on supervisory approaches on the ICT third-party risks by subjecting the service providers to a union oversight framework. 5. Information sharing The guidelines encourage collaboration among trusted communities of other financial entities. This collaboration will enhance the digital operational resilience of financial entities, raise awareness on ICT risks, minimize ICT threats' ability to spread, support entities' defensive and detection techniques, mitigation strategies, or response and recovery stages. Financial entities are encouraged to exchange amongst themselves cyber threat information and intelligence through arrangements that protect the potentially sensitive nature of the information shared. So how does all of this fit into a timeline? Let's take a closer look. 2020. On the 24th September 2020, the European Commission publishes DORA proposal as part of the wider Digital Finance Package, DFP. 2021 to 2022, European Parliament and Council of the European Union start negotiations on their respective DORA approaches. 2023, entering into force. DORA entered into force in Q1. Competent authorities published draft regulatory and implementing technical standards, RTS and ITS, in two trenches. 2024, first tranche of RTS and ITS to be finalized and submitted to EC for adoption in January 2024, second tranche due by July 2024. 2025 enforcement. In scope entities are expected to be DORA compliant by the 17th January 2025. 